Welcome into our first edition of something I'm calling icebreakers. That's that makes sense, right? Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joined here with uh, Condors captain Keegan Lowe. I'm Carrie Osef, sports director at 23 ABC, and I wanted to talk to the Condors, get to know them a little bit better. So we're going to ask. 23 random questions, except I do have a cheat sheet here, so uh, don't judge me on that. <laughs> All right, Keegan, so question number one, I want to know, how did you get into hockey? Uh, I got in really young age, uh, growing up in Canada. It seems like everyone plays, but my father actually played professionally, so I think as soon as I could walk, I was probably in skates and loved it right from the start. And for you, a defenseman on the team, how did you choose to be on the defensive side of hockey? Um, well, my, my dad was a defenseman, that's what most people probably think is why, but I actually started as a forward and I was a forward probably till, I can't remember what age, but my first, you know, five, six years of hockey until uh, first day of a new season of hockey and my coach asked me if I, uh, I'd like to try defense because we didn't have enough defensemen and I tried it and stuck there ever since. It's worked out pretty well, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Keegan, question number three, what is your favorite part about the game of hockey? Uh, just like the camaraderie, you know, we get to, you know, stay, be with your best friends, you know, every, all day, every day of, of the season and then, you know, meet, meet a bunch of new people from amazing different places and, you know, get, go to battle with them on the ice and you make so many good friends and, um, you know, it's situations like that where you make your best friends and, you know, hope, hopefully just, uh, you know, stay close for life. All right, well, question number four, I'm going to put you on the spot. What's <laughs> the uh, worst part about the game of hockey? <laughs> that's yeah that's really put me on the spot Give him I, a minute. <laughs> I, I think the easy answer would be to say that there isn't any bad parts um, there definitely isn't any I can I can think about right now we're extremely grateful to be able to play hockey for a job yeah. um, maybe when you're younger and just being away from family a little bit when you're yeah. when you're in those younger years and you know the sac the small sacrifices you have to make but you know they're all worth it now so I would think maybe the fights, but no, you probably like that part too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, it, if it has to be done, you know, it's in, in the heat of the moment. Sometimes you get mad enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, question number five. If you weren't playing hockey right now, what would you be doing? Uh, that's a really good question. You get asked that all the time. I think, you know, you grow up your whole life just want to be a hockey player, and that's all you focus on. But, um, you know, I love an anything outdoors or also, like, I'm really into fitness, so maybe somewhere in there. But, um who knows if what I'll do after hockey at this point, but you know, right now it's just the game. All right, and for many who might not know, uh, a lot of Canadians on the team, you are one of them. So what is uh, what offers better food, America or Canada? Oh, that's tough. Eh? Put each, you on the spot again. Yeah, I know each, <laughs> each country has, has really good stuff. You know, being down here in the South, I find we find a lot of good, you know, Mexican and Spanish yep. food and stuff like that. Uh, when you go into LA, you get some good sushi that you wouldn't get in uh, back home in Edmonton in the prairies. But uh, it's hard to turn down a good, you know, Alberta steak. Uh, that's what we're known for back there, Alberta beef. And there's some good restaurants that when you're when you're away from home, you miss. So I'd like to say home, but uh, there's some gems down here too. Yeah. So for you, a unique experience. A lot of hockey players sometimes make that jump directly from juniors into the league, not doing it by going through college. So can you take me through that NHL, that draft experience when you got brought up, when you know that you were going to sign on the dotted line and be a professional hockey player? What, what was that like for you? Yeah. So you played junior hockey, and then when you're 18 is when you go into the draft. And I was picked by the Carolina Hurricanes when I was 18 years old. Um, so that was obviously to that point, one of the best days in my life, the most exciting days in my life. And then from there, you know, you you have a couple more years before you officially turn pro. So I played two more years junior back home in Edmonton where I'm from. So that was awesome. I, I loved every every part of those days. And then finally, 19 years old, you get offered, offered a contract and you get to sign it. And that's when it really, you know, the dream starts coming real because every step, you know, you, you make from the draft to signing your contract and then actually playing professionally, um, is is where guys fall off and you have to you know as soon as you get drafted it doesn't mean you've made it yet but at that point in time it sure feels like you did pretty awesome and f obviously with being a professional athlete there's a lot of traveling what's your favorite place to travel to whether it's been for hockey or just on your personal vacations well I'd, yeah, I'd have to go with the personal vacations <laughs> a, a little spot down in Mexico that my wife and I like to go to and uh, it's called Puerto Escondido down in the southern in Oaxaca in Mexico, and we love it there. We've been there a bunch. Of good surfing, amazing food, awesome people. So I love it there. And then uh, we get to travel to some 
cool cities on the road here too in the AHL. I love going to Austin, Texas, and San yeah. Antonio. I know the San Diego, like hard to complain about those cities, right? <laughs> no, not too bad. <laughs> and uh, I gotta ask you, I'm losing track of my numbers here. I believe we're on question nine, but what's the biggest misconception about hockey players? <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> tough. I mean, I think when you watch, like you, you'll see some movies or like, or shows where <laughs> they play the hockey players off as, you know, like dumb, like, like high school kids, you know, and I think that's not entirely true. And I'm not saying that there isn't any of that in the league, but anytime you see like a show or a Hollywood movie, they always, you know, put the hockey player in missing tees, like kind of <laughs> rough looking guy, uh, not, not very smart, didn't go to school, but there's a lot of really smart guys in the game for sure. Yeah, and smart guys on the Condors. Oh yeah, we're all smart. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't one of the questions, but moving on here. Uh, what's your favorite part, speaking of the Condors, what's your favorite part about this team? Uh, I, I mean, it's just, it's the guys, you know, we have we have such a good time together on the bus. We spend a lot of time time together, especially in the, in the minor pro ranks yeah. in the AHL, on the bus, traveling in airports. You know, times where you're tired and you just wish you were back home or whatever, long travel days. And, you know, those are that's when the team really, really bonds the most. And, we have so many good guys, guys in the in the room last year and this year as well. So it's just an absolute joy to come to the rink with them every day. So it's it's the teammates and the guys you're with every day. And to put you uh, back in memory lane from last year, an incredible incredible year for the Condors. Uh, what was your favorite part about that year? Uh, it's hard to pick a specific part. I mean, there's a picture up in our locker room. Uh, when we beat Ontario during that win streak we had at home in overtime, Cooper Marodi scored the goal and it was, you know, we've obviously an extremely exciting time in our season and we had, you know, we were, we seemed like we were winning every game in a different way. And, uh, you know, we obviously going into overtime, the streak was on the line and Cooper, you know, buried the goal and everyone comes flying off the bench right over there, <laughs> guys are falling. And, and we had another one of those experiences at home against San right, Diego right. in the playoffs, same thing, the guy scores the goal and it's just, you can't wait to get off the bench. You're jumping mm -hmm. over. There's guys' skates <laughs> flying everywhere, right? So um, those two moments definitely stick out the best. Just, you know, you can't wait to get off the bench and go celebrate with your teammates on a, you know, an emotional high. Awesome. And it was cool for everyone that was in this building. I think it's a memory everyone was involved in that we're going to take away forever. That's pretty cool. So from amateur hockey to professional, what is by far the biggest difference? Uh, as far as the game goes, it's just the skill and the speed. Everybody's older, a little bit stronger, faster, and they know the game better. It's it's a lot less scrambling. Everyone's in their place. You can you can't make mistakes because yeah. you know if you make a mistake, chances are you're going to get cashed in on. Um, but you know, in the in the junior and the amateur ranks, you can kind of get away with those mistakes. So that's the first thing that young guys and myself included when I turned pro had to learn is that you know a mistake is going to cost you a lot more here than it did in the last level. And it Currently, as we speak, uh, the Oilers are leading the Pacific Division right now in the NHL. So how cool is it, and to uh, just like your experience from coming from Edmonton, to be a part of the Oilers organization? Yeah, it's awesome. It's a dream come true. Like you said, I, I grew up in Edmonton, and uh, so being having a chance to you know put on the jersey in preseason and a couple games I played there a couple years ago uh, was a dream come true for me. Yeah. And just seeing them do well, you know, the city deserves it so much. There's, so many passionate hockey fans there and they've they've been through a lot they've been through you know some bad years and then mm -hmm. the glory days 2006 they had a good run a couple of years ago they had a, another good run and they lost in the you know they were one step away from uh from getting there but um you know it means a lot to the city and it means a lot to someone who's from the city to see them doing well as well and you don't always get to see that so it's pretty unique to see someone get brought into their hometown team in the professional level as well that's a cool thing well for you I asked this a year ago to some of the players, 17 game winning streak. Are there any superstitions for you when you play hockey, especially in moments like that? Anything you continue to do when you're doing well and you're, you know you're consciously doing it as a superstition, but you know, <laughs> hockey players are really in their routine. Um, on a game day, you'll, you'll find that most guys do the same thing. They eat very similar things, um, you know, get up at the same time, leave the rink at the same time. Just because if you take all those variables out, then you know all you have to focus on is playing the game. Right, right. Um, for me, I'm I'm the same way. You know, I leave pretty much the same time every day. Stop and grab a coffee. Like, and if things are going well, you're going to continue to do those same things. You get dressed at the same time. I wouldn't say I'm overly superstitious. You know, the the gimmicky <laughs> things. Yeah. But yeah. I definitely <laughs> like to stick to my routine. <laughs> awesome. So for you, uh, in terms of that routine, and I heard you're a bit of a health nut. What's that pregame meal for you? 
Just a cup of gel? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> well, that's definitely part of it after the nap. But uh, um, so I have a few different go-tos. Uh, like, and my wife's really good in the kitchen too, so she helps me out. But usually there's gonna be rice and chicken for sure. And then <laughs> okay. a, a, bun a bunch of veggies. And I usually just mix it up into a big, you know, salad bunch of make sure it's really colorful and make sure I'm feeling healthy before the game <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for you we talked about so the 17 game win streak besides maybe that streak what's the biggest streak you've had in your life could be anything yeah uh, I mean my mind just goes to hockey obviously naturally when I was in junior we had a pretty good team for a few years there and I think I I can't put my finger on the exact number uh, of wins we had in a row but it went into the playoffs as well we I think we had at least 10 maybe a few more going into playoffs and then we swept the first two rounds and the first three games of the conference finals and all they were talking about was you know this record we were chasing and it was it was weighing on us but obviously there was a bigger prize in mind with the the championship coming up that we ended up ended up winning that year so that was that was second and it was you know just the same as the one we had last year here is exciting all the way through so lucky guy no <laughs> superstitions that's pretty good so if you could if we could switch shoes or skates if you could work in tv what would you want to do oh that's a that's a good one <laughs> <laughs> you probably never thought if about I, it because you're kind of you're pretty busy doing this but <laughs> yeah i mean if tv maybe be the i always thought it'd be cool to the people who are in the the big storms and they're trying to <laughs> try, try, our trying to weather report. our weather uh, men and women out there. He wants to take your job. <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep your hat on and just still, but they they keep their cool and they they get their job done. They're in the middle of a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, no, pretty cool. I I do not want to be there. I'll stick to sports, but I'll I'll stay for uh, the champagne showers, not the real showers outside. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what is more of an impact to you, Keegan? I always love asking athletes this. What sticks with you more, a big time win or a big time loss? Uh, I guess it depends on on how the how the team's doing. Um, you know, you're you're always taught to try and not let the highs get you too high yeah. and the lows too low. So, I think I think a bad loss kind of stings, though. You know, it it really you're thinking about it when you're sleeping, but when you have a good team and and you're expecting to win and you're expected to win. Um, you know, you take those wins and then you just get ready for the next challenge. But then when you when you have a tough loss, it kind of sits with you. And if it's on a Saturday game where you don't t play till Friday, you have to have that bitter taste in your mouth for a whole week. So uh, the wins are really exciting, but it just sucks losing. So I might have to say that, that the losses. All right, my next question for you is how do you get over that? What's the key to getting over a loss? Especially those ones that sting. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, as much as I say like it sits with you, you have to you know all the best players can can forget about it and move on and when you have a tough loss the coaches are going to do their jobs and you know tell us what we got to do better and uh to fix it so you know it's it's just going home and you know thinking about it for a little bit but then moving on with your life because at the end of the day you have to you know you have to be in a good mood and a good frame of mind to come back and do better the next time so all right keys to success right there from the captain <laughs> so i don't know do you know what question we're on no. Then we got five more. Be, yeah. <laughs> we Let's got five, do five more. more. <laughs> so of course, uh, you're with the Oilers. We're in a bit of oil country here in America, right here in Bakersfield. Um, what's the the biggest thing you know about oil? <laughs> that one, that's a tough one. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a very tough one. I know where I'm from in Edmonton, Alberta, really relies on it. It, it drives our economy, and um, you know, I know, I I don't know a lot about like the process and stuff of how it goes, but. Um, I yeah, should I have asked what's your favorite part about what yeah, my, <laughs> it, it's there. Good, good, good <laughs> question. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a tough one, but I know it's extremely important to where I'm from. So yeah, cool. That, that works for <laughs> us. <laughs> and for you, Keegan, uh, a long storied career already, but what's your favorite hockey memory? Um, I have so many. It's that's I'm so sure. hard. I mean, playing my first NHL game was something that's really tough to beat playing. Yeah. Um, my first game for the Oilers, which I grew up cheering for, is something that's also going to be really tough to beat. And also, those games that I played in Edmonton, the chance that my grandmother, who doesn't, it was my biggest fan, uh, she passed away this summer, but she never got to see me that much, play very much when I went away and played pro. And so that was her first time in a while to see me play. So yeah. I'm extremely grateful for that. But 
you know, like I said, it's all the wins, it's all the good times. It's the 17 game winning streak last year. It's the celebrating in the locker room after a big game and, you know, with the good guys on the bus, so. Yeah, it's brought you a lot of cool memories. I love that. Well, when you think of memories, as kids, people love sports. We love sports movies. What's your favorite sports movie? Oh, there's so many good sports. <laughs> you gotta but, pick one but <laughs> when you said it, like the first one that came to my mind is, uh, and it's kind of a local movie, is McFarland. That, oh, yeah. That yeah. movie gets me every time. Like, I I get the chills when I think it's Danny Diaz comes around the corner yeah. at the end, and they're all surprised like that. Um, but there's so many good ones, hockey ones and stuff. But it's For just sure. that feeling you get, like I said, when when they come around the corner in that race and you get the, the tingles all over your body. Any movie that does that for me, I'll, I'll watch over and See, over and I again. I feel every sports movie does that. Yeah, oh but yeah. But I'm with you, but you just made all of Kern County really happy. So McFarland <laughs> Cougars, this is your guy. <laughs> so when you need to break away from sports, what's your favorite thing to do? Um, for me, it's any anything around the water. Um, here being relatively close to the ocean, uh, get out there and go, whether it's swimming, you know, surfing, getting in the water or just sitting on the beach and, and watching the waves. Um, I grew up on a lake and uh, the water is just something that it always resets me and, and puts me in a good mood. So any chance I get, I'm there. Love it, love it too. And I love the beaches. I wish we were a little bit closer. Yeah, Bakersfield's yeah. Not but you can't close complain. Enough. I know, can't, can't complain. Close <laughs> enough. <laughs> All right, Keegan, you have survived. We are at the 23rd question. So we're calling this icebreaker. So uh, what's your favorite way to break the ice? Take that question however you want. Favorite way to break the ice? I don't know. I'd like to say it was a good joke, but it's a good question. I don't know. Just I don't know. I don't know. It could how to be literally this breaking the ice. I didn't, I said you could you take it however you want. Taking a hockey stick, break the ice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just introduce yourself and go from there, I guess. All right. Well, you heard it there. That's the way to break the ice. I broke the ice on this segment with Keegan Loki. Keegan, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. And uh, hopefully you guys got to know this guy a little bit better. And if you guys have questions for me next time, please let us know. But until then, uh, we'll see you later. Thank you. You had to warn me about that last one. I was I like, where do I go with it?